Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It is my honor to present the speech written by our honorable missionary Anil Jikin Sab. Nahmaduhu wa nusulli ala rasulihi al-kareem. Amma ba'du fa'udhu billahi min al-shaytani al-rajim. Bismillahi r-Rahmani r-Rahim. Kya zindagi ka zawk agar wo nahi mila? Kya zindagi ka zawk اگر وہ نہیں ملا لانت ہے ایسے جینے پہ گھر اس سے ہیں جدا There is no taste of life if we didn't find him It is a curse to live if we are separated from him It is a quote from the poems of the promised Messiah alayhi salam From this poem we can understand that our life will be useless if we do not connect ourselves with God Therefore, if we want our life to end up uh, full of benefits, we have to always strive to connect ourselves with God. But which God do we have to connect ourselves with? Is it with God who was crucified? Or a God who is Rabbul Alameen? Respected President, Amir Sahib, honorable guests, dear brothers and sisters, it is indeed an honor and a privilege to stand before you today to speak on the profound and all-encompassing concept of God in Islam. The concept of God is the very foundation upon which the edifice of Islam stands. Understanding this concept is crucial for fostering a deeper connection with our faith, especially for the younger generation who often feel distant from God and religion. Question arises, why are people, especially the youth, distant from God and religion? Yes, let's begin by addressing this pressing question. One of the primary reasons is a lack of understanding of the true nature of God. Many perceive God as a being who only punishes and seeks retribution. This misconception leads to fear, not love, alienation, and not connection. The Holy Quran states, surely this Quran guides to what is most right. Chapter 17, verse 10. The purpose of the Quran is to guide us to a balanced and comprehensive understanding of God. So what are the misconceptions about God? The most common perception of God as solely a punitive is far from truth. This image is often perpetuated by a limited interpretation of religious texts and cultural narratives that emphasize punishment over mercy. As a result, young people may feel that religion is harsh and unacceptable. To understand why these misconceptions arise, we must consider at least three factors which influence our young minds. I've divided that into three points. A, societal and cultural influences. Today's society is increasingly secular and religion is often portrayed as outdated and irrelevant. Many young people are exposed to negative portrayals of religion as in the media, emphasizing conflict, extremism, and intolerance. This constant barrage of exposure shapes their perceptions, leading them to view religion as a source of division rather than guidance and solace. B, a lack of authentic religious education. Another critical factor is the lack of authentic religious education. In many communities, religious teachings are often presented in a very rigid and a dogmatic manner, focusing more on rules and punishments rather than the spiritual and moral essence of faith. This approach fails to resonate with the inquisitive and open minds of young people, driving them away from religion. 
C, disconnection from religious communities. Moreover, the modern lifestyle with its emphasis on individualism and material success has led to a disconnection <laughs> from religious communities. The sense of belonging and support that religious communities should offer is diminished, leaving young people isolated in their spiritual journey. Now let us see the concept of God as is presented by Islam. To address those three misconceptions, we must turn to the authentic sources of Islamic teachings, the Quran, the Hadiths of the Prophet Muhammad and the sayings of the of Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed alayhi salam. Yes, through the Holy Quran, the teachings of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, and the insights of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, we can give, gain a deep understanding of who God is and how we can relate to him. Let's see what the concept of God is presented in the Holy Quran. The Holy Quran, the final and complete revelation from Allah, provides the most comprehensive description of God. There are so many verses which talk about the concept of God in the Holy Quran, but let me share some of the pivotal verses that illuminate the nature of the concept and attributes of Allah. First and foremost, Allah introduces himself in Surah Al-Ikhlas, chapter 112. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد Say He is Allah the one Allah the independent and besought of all he begets not, nor is he begotten, and there is none like unto him. This surah encapsulates the essence of monotheism, declaring the absolute oneness of God, free from any physical attributes or familial structures. I remember there was a program on MTA International a few years back which discussed about God. One of the personalities which has been interviewed is the son of our present beloved Khalifa Mirza Bakar Salman. He stated that the first and the most important thing his father taught him while they were in Ghana was the concept of God, taught by Islam through the verse I read above. This is the concept of God that must always live in us. The Quran presents a holistic view of God, emphasizing his mercy, compassion, and justice. One of the most frequently mentioned attributes of God in the Quran is Ar-Rahman, the most merciful, Ar-Rahim, the most compassionate. These attributes highlight that God's primary relationship with his creation is one of mercy and compassion. In Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 187, Allah says, and when my servants ask thee about me, I am near. I answer the prayer of the supplicant when he prays to me. The verse and the scores the closeness of God to his creation and his readiness to respond to those who want to seek him. In another chapter, another significant verse, Allah says, Allahu la ilaha illahu al-hayyu al-qayyub La ta'khuzuhu sinatun wa la nawm Lahu ma fi s-samawati wa ma fi l-ard Man zalladhi yashfa'u indahu illa bi isnih Ya'lamu ma bayna aydihim wa ma khalfahum Wa la yuhituna bi shayya min ilmihi illa bi ma shah Allah, there is no God but He, the living, the self-subsisting, and all-sustaining, 
Slumber seizes him not, nor is sleep. To him belongs whatsoever is in the heavens and whatsoever is in the earth. Who is that with that will intercede with him except by his permission? He knows what is before them and what is behind them, and they encompass nothing of his knowledge except what he pleases. His knowledge extends over the heavens and the earth, and the care of them burdens him not. And he is the high, the great. This verse, known as Ayatul Kursi, and I am sure most of us already memorized this ayat, which describes God's omnipotence, omniscience, and his all-encompassing sovereignty. Believe me, dear brothers and sisters, if we connect ourselves with the concept of God, which is presented by Islam, God that always shows himself how he is all living, all standing, loving, and merciful. God who always answers our prayers when we ask him. God who knows to the depths of our hearts, either you are a Muslim or a Christian or a Hindu or a Buddhist or any other religion, one life will be very meaningful. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, never leave him. A hadith narrated by Anas bin Malik says, If a servant approaches me a span, I will approach him a cubit. I will approach him on foot. If he approaches me on foot, I will approach him running. And God, which is present, which is presented by Islam, will always save us from the fire of destruction if we always love him and obey him. In this regard, the Prophet Muhammad wrote in one of his poems, Aag hai par aag se wo sab bachaye jayenge. Aag hai par aag se wo sab bachaye jayenge. Jo ke rakhte hain khudai zul ajaib se piyar. There is fire, but from the fire, all those who be, will be saved, who love God, the manifestation of dual wonders. Now I present the teaching of the Holy Quran about the concept of God. The Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam provided us with a living example of how to understand and worship Allah. His teachings and actions were always centered around the remembrance and worship of Allah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam emphasized the importance of sincerity in worship. In a hadith narrated by Umar bin al-Khattab, the Prophet said, actions are judged by intentions, and every person will get what they intended. Whoever emigrated for Allah and his messenger, their emigration is for Allah and his messenger. Whoever emigrated for worldly gains or to marry a woman, their emigration is for what they emigrated for, say Bukhari. This hadith highlights that our connection to God must be based on pure and sincere intentions, seeking his player alone. Furthermore, the Prophet taught about the mercy and compassion of Allah in a hadith of Qudsi. He said, when Allah completed the creation, he wrote in his book, which is with him on his throne, my mercy and overpowers my anger. This teaching assures us of Allah's boundless mercy and encourages us to always turn to him in repentance and hope. In another hadith, Prophet Muhammad said, God is more loving and kind than a mother to her dear child. This powerful analogy helps us understand the depth of God's love and care for humanity. Let's consider the story of a man who killed 99 people in a famous hadith. This man sought repentance and was told by a scholar that there was no forgiveness for him. He then found another scholar who advised him to leave his wicked ways and seek forgiveness. On his way to repentance, he died, and due to his sincere intentions to repent, God forgave him. This story highlights the boundless mercy of God. Therefore, even though we may have committed many sins, 
But we must always remember that once we turn to Allah and repent our sin in front of Allah, Allah will forgive us because his mercy overpowers his anger and because he loves us. And we should not give up on God's mercy. As Allah Almighty says in Surah Zamar, verse 54 says, O oh, my servants who have sinned against their souls, despair not of the mercy of Allah. Surely Allah forgives all sins. Verily, he is, more, he is most forgiving, ever merciful. Now thirdly, I touch the teachings of the Prophet Messiah of to the nature and the concept of God. The Prophet Messiah and Mahdi Maud, as a Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, the founder of the Muslim and their community, came to revive and restore the true teachings of Islam. He provided us deep insights into the concept of God, <laughs> emphasizing God's living relationship with his creation. In his book, The Philosophy of the Teaching of Islam, the Prophet of Islam expounds, the God of Islam is the same unique and peerless being who has been described as possessing all perfect attributes, free from all defects, and free from any associates. The principal function of the Holy Quran is to lead mankind to the one true God who is free from all defects and who comprises all perfect attributes. The Prophet Muhammad also emphasized the importance of developing a personal relationship with God through prayer and righteousness. He said, our God is that God who has always manifested himself to his chosen servants through his mighty signs and who has shown them his omniscience and omnipotence in every age. He speaks to them and comforts them and fulfills their objectives by helping them in extraordinary ways. The living connection with God is what sets apart Islam from other religions and provides a direct personal and experiential relationship with the divine being. In Malfuzat, as the Muslim says, prayer is a shield between the believer and the hell. And in the philosophy of the teaching of Islam, he says, God is the living, the self-sisting, the eternal. He is the fountain of our life and the source of all grace. In conclusion, the concept of God in Islam is profoundly monotheistic, emphasizing the oneness, omnipotence, and mercy of Allah. Through the teachings of the Holy Quran, the exemplary life of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the insights provided by Hazrat Mashim of Islam, we are invited to develop a deep, sincere, and personal relationship with our Creator. Therefore, if we want to save ourselves, our descendants, our society from destruction, we should make the God presented by Islam as our friend and as our guardian, because if we make God our guardian, then he will bring us out of this darkness and bring us to the light. He will remove us from all difficulties and bring us to the player. He will bring us out of the sorrows and bring us to the joys. As he said, Allahu al nur. By what way can we make Allah as our guardian, as our friend? The easiest way and the most important way yes, is here. prayers. Do our prayers regularly, okay. take care of our prayers, okay. and do our prayers as the Messenger of God said, as if you see God, and if you don't see him, for sure he sees you. The promised Messiah also emphasized how important it is that we maintain our prayers and never abandon our prayers. He said in Malfuzat, Volume 3, page 591. Agar sara ghar mat karo. Let the whole house be plundered, but do not abandon the prayer. Regular prayer and reflection are essential. The act of praying five times a day is not just a ritual, but a means to establish a direct connection with God. The Quran states, 
Establish prayer for my remembrance. Chapter 20, verse 14. Encouraging the youth to find personal moments of reflection and meditation can help them experience the tranquility and peace that comes from connecting with God. God retreats, spiritual work workshops, and guided meditation sessions can provide structured opportunities for this connection. It is imperative for us to share the comprehensive and loving concept of God with the younger generation. By doing so, we can help bridge the gap between them and their faith, fostering a relationship with God based on love, mercy, and understanding. Let us remember that God's essence is love, mercy, and compassion. Let us strive to embody these attributes in our lives, to educate our youth with wisdom and understanding, and to create communities that reflect the true spirit of Islam. Thank you very much for your time and attention. May we all strive to deepen our understanding of God and draw closer to him in our daily lives. Peace and blessings be upon you. May Allah enable us to understand these teachings, and may he strengthen our bond with him. Amen. Jazakumullah.